Well, ladies and gentlemen, this world is just like a moth that is being slowly but surely drawn to the flame. Just can't leave it alone. Just cannot resist. As I go through the news articles every day, I am just absolutely amazed at how accurately the prophecies of the Bible are converging together right now. You read one article after another, after another, after another, and they all fit into the plan once you understand what the plan is. The plan is revealed in the prophecies of the Bible. We're told everything pretty much that's going to happen between now and the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is very close right now. And that's the reason that I highly recommend to you that you go through our Understanding the End Time series. It's a 14-DVD series. The name of it is Understanding the End Time. Many people say you can't understand Bible prophecy, but I've had so many people tell me after they go through these 14 DVDs, I understood it. I'm amazed at what I'm now understanding. So, But the point is simply this. You and I are living in the most prolific time of prophetic fulfillment in the history of the entire world. Not an exaggeration. I'm serious. Right now, today, we are living in the time when all the prophecies are converging together. I'll never forget when I was planning on starting End Time Magazine back in, what was it, 1990 was about when I was talking to a friend of mine. Uh, This friend is a brilliant person, but he said to me, Uh, you're starting a prophecy magazine? I said, yes. He said, what are you going to put in it? After three issues, you're going to be done. Everything's going to be exhausted. Well, I knew he simply had no comprehension at all. Uh, Well, he would have really raised his eyebrows if we would have told him not only were we going to produce a magazine every other month, but we're going to be on radio and television every single day. He would have been astounded at that. What in the world were you talking about? Well, let me tell you. Just talk about anything because God has his nose in all of our business. God is moving in the affairs of men. Whether you want to talk about the move toward one world government, toward globalization, whether you want to talk about the move toward a uh, homosexual sodomite generation, whether you want to talk about uh, the developments in the Middle East, the rebirth of the Holy Roman Empire, Uh, the move toward the computerization of all of society, do you realize that the Bible prophesies all of those things and a whole lot more? It's astounding as we see. No matter, almost every article I pick up, it all fits the pattern because we're in the countdown to the Battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ right now. Now, if you don't believe that, it's because you just don't know. You haven't been informed. And that's the reason I do recommend to you our series. It's called Understand the End Time. If you're interested in it, the number to call is 1-800-END-TIME. Our operators are standing by right now. Now I want to go to uh, an article that just came out. Uh, this comes from Debka File, and it was published, well, actually just yesterday. And the title of the article is U.S. and Iran's First joint military venture fighting al-Qaeda in Iraq. I looked at that and said, wait a minute, the U.S. and Iran are in a joint military venture? How could this be? I thought we were getting ready to bomb Iran to kingdom come. And all of a sudden you're saying that our shoulders are side by side against a common enemy? I mean, Iran's got all these troops in Syria and we wanted to wipe Bashar al-Assad off the map. We were going to go in there, and we took uh, missiles, Patriot missiles, uh, down to Turkey and aimed them toward uh, Bashar al-Assad. And uh, we uh, also established a presence in Jordan and took troops up there. And all of a sudden, we're fighting side by side. I mean, when I saw this, I almost laughed. I don't know how many of you have read the book 1984 by George Orwell. But in 1984, he painted a scenario where uh, people were fighting against one enemy one day, and then the news came on the next day, and they're now that's now they're afraid and they're fighting against this other enemy. And it was like the people were so 
conditioned to blindly follow the political leadership that whatever happened, they just went with it. And everybody was so afraid to resist and to disagree. Uh, and when I read this today, I thought, oh, my goodness, uh, George Orwell was right on the money. And he wrote that book in 1948. Can you believe it? The name of the book was 1984. Now, he missed his timeline just a little bit, but not by too much. Uh, if you've never read the book 1984, I would highly, highly, highly recommend it to you. Now, when I read it the first time, it sounded so unbelievable that this could ever come to pass. But if you read it now, you'll think, oh, everything's been like this ever since 1948 when George Orwell wrote the book. It was nothing like this back in those days. But somehow he had insight into what was coming. Uh, if you've not read 1984, I would recommend it to you right now. It may help you understand what's going on. So what is going on? I mean, here we are. Uh, supposedly on the brink of nuclear war with Iran. The tensions are mounting. And then we look up, and we're fighting shoulder to shoulder with Iran. Really? Against whom? Against Al-Qaeda. You mean the people that we fought alongside of in 2011 against Muammar Gaddafi in Libya? What? What's going on here? I mean, I found myself saying, who's on first? What's on second? Uh, you know, you don't know whether you're pitching or catching these days. We don't know who the friend is, and we don't know who the enemy is. And sometimes you even begin to wonder if that's not exactly what they intend to create. So, huh, wow. Anyway. Uh, well, let me just give you a little bit more of the story because you do need to know. With the Geneva Nuclear Accord still far from implementation, a month after it was signed in Geneva, the United States and Iran are moving into stage two of their, their uh, rapprochement. They are now fighting together to crush al-Qaeda terror in Iraq, exclusive military sources report. Iraq is two weeks into a major offensive for cutting al-Qaeda down, the first major military challenge the jihadists have faced in the past six years. Three armies are fighting alongside Iraq, the United States, Iran's al-Quds brigades, officers, and Syria. So here we are. We're fighting with Syria? I thought we were against Syria. We're fighting with Iran, I thought we were against Iran. We're fighting with Iraq. I thought we were against Iraq. Oh, brother, where in my brain out? What in the world is going on here? Okay. Now, the mission is to foil al-Qaeda's drive to spread its first independent state in the Middle East across Iraqi-Syrian frontier. It's Iraqi and Syrian branches, ISIS and the Nusra Front, have declared a holy war to this end under their commanders, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and Abu Muhammad al-Golani. The Anbar province of western Iraq is the scene of the fiercest combat close to Iraq's borders with Syria and with Jordan. Now, in order to counter al-Qaeda's superiority in speed and surprise, the U.S. has sent the Iraqi Army Hellfire Service to air missiles. We've sent these to Iraq to help them in their fight against al-Qaeda. They are already in use against al-Qaeda's camps on the Syrian border. Next, Washington is sending out small, long-endurance, unmanned aerial and bars deep wadi. Uh, most, let me, I, I skipped one. Long-endurance, uh, unmanned aerial scan eagles. These drones are best suited to combat in Anbar's deep wadis and the halophyte thickets lining the Euphrates River. So, our drones are fighting the Euf up and along the Euphrates River. Now, here's what Russia says about all this. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov noted approvingly on December the 26th 
Attitudes are changing in Western countries. They are becoming more realistic in their approach toward the Syrian crisis. The threat of terrorism in Syria, of jihadists coming to power, of creating a caliphate with extremist laws, these are the main problems. Now, all of a sudden, Lofroff is saying, hey, wake up and smell the coffee here. We're on the brink of uh, jihadists taking over Syria and setting up a caliphate. That's what they're all after. They're wanting to get a foothold so that Islam can rule the world. He said, you're waking up finally to the real problem. Went on to say, since the Syrian chemical issue was addressed in September, Russian-Iranian-American collaboration is going strong. The joint U.S.-Iranian war on al-Qaeda is strengthening Tehran's grip on Iraq as well as Syria. Hmm. Interesting. Now, have you got your brain around this yet? Okay, now, who are we fighting? Uh, we're fighting al-Qaeda, right? Who we were just fighting with two years ago in Libya against Muammar Gaddafi. As a matter of fact, weren't we channeling military equipment to them to fight against Syria's Bashar al-Assad? I, I think we were. But now then, we're fighting against them. So what's going on here? Does anybody know? Does President Obama know what's going on here? Or are we all making it up as we go? Well, I don't know all those answers, but I know where we're headed because it says they're fighting along the Euphrates River, and it's in your Bible. If you'll open your Bible to Revelation chapter number 9, verse number 13 through 16, it says there that a war is going to emanate from the Euphrates River that will spin out of control, become a world war, and kill one-third of the human race. Now, this all makes me nervous when it seems like there's nobody really driving this ship. It seems like everything's just sort of out of control. Does that mean this war is on the brink of coming? It's coming. Whether it's on the brink or not, we'll, we'll soon find out. <laughs> 